Hello and welcome to the Virtual Guru. My name is Jack, your host. Today I'm bringing you another shaving video, and today I'm from sunny old England. Uh, been here for uh, I think it's about three days. The weather has been atrocious, as expected. Um, I'm, I'm loving being back home. I have to say, you like it, it's. I, I I enjoy a lot of aspects of America. Honestly, I do, but it's not my home, and it never will be my home. Honestly, um, it's been fantastic seeing my family. Like I told you in previous videos, I kind of left quite abruptly. So the ability to come back and see my family, see how everyone is doing, my friends, it's been it's been an invigorating experience. You know, it's been an experience that I know I needed because, frankly, you know, it was getting to the point where I started really missing everyone. Let me move this camera a little bit closer. That's better. Much better. Okay, so what I'm using today. I bought a uh, Talbot shaving, Coles Pond with me. You guys know this is one of my favorite um, Talbot scents. The scent on this is very mossy. It's very, very green. I think it's an aquatic at heart, but overall it's a very mossy green scent. It's one of my favorites by them. I'm gonna be sticking with this uh, titanium Christopher Bradley here. This is an incredible razor, one really, really one of my favorites at this point. I've, probably, I've used it about four times and it's just very consistent. And my brush of choice is going to be the synthetic, well, the tuxedo turn and shave. This is a 26 mm knot, set very low in the handle. And this is a cool small handle, ideal for traveling for me. So I sweat the brush here. The, the water and bristle is very, very soft. Um, I miss it. it. It does wonders for my skin, does wonders for my hair. Fortunately, I'm moving to Portland, Oregon, so the water there is also pretty damn soft, which will help me quite a lot when it comes to stuff like this. Or I'm, you know, I live in Africa, I'm used to shaving in hard water, so I don't know how much of a difference it actually makes for me now, but I guess. I guess we'll see, eh? Let's keep it going a bit. I think that's enough of the load. About a 25 second load there, that's all that's required. I'm a bit far from the mirror, but it should be fine. There's a towel behind me here. Let's take off the specs. Get my face wet. Yeah, I've enjoyed my time here so far. I'm happy that we still have another week in a bit, you know? Um, we're going to London. I've arranged to meet the owner of uh, Oatcake Soaps. Pick up some soap from him. He's got this new brand called Dead Sea Shave that I've seen Kevy use. Curious to see how that performs. It's got few interesting elements, so I'm looking forward to seeing how all of those are. I know Oatcake is a good base, so I'm happy to buy some of like his actual base. Um, I've been looking at Overgrowth, Mahogany, and uh, English Pear. English Pear sounds lovely, so definitely pick that up there. Let's get to leathering up. So I've, I've shaved here once before. And honestly, the soft water just makes lather just erupt. So, <laughs> yeah, it doesn't take long to make a lather. My my friend Justin at the Red Island, the Red Island Shaver. I believe where he lives has pretty hard water. He, I think he uses distilled water to shave and he sees a drastic difference in, in how his lather is being made. So do I, a lot of people have told me they don't think it makes a difference. I am on the other side of the spectrum. I think it makes quite a lot of difference. 
hard water in terms of just doing things that require water is a lot. Yeah, it's never good, particularly. I can't think of hard water being better for anything, if you can, tell me, because <laughs> I, I don't think it does better with anything. Yeah, I'm enjoying being here. Um, yeah, I mean, you know, the, the, the biggest thing for me is knowing I have a support network around me. Because in, in the US, I kind of, for the most part, did it alone. You know, I don't have my family and my friends around, so a lot of it is just kind of figuring it out myself. Which is fine, you know, I'm a, I'm a, I think I'm old enough to do that. But at the same time, it's nice having my older siblings here. My, my dad, my mom, etc. It makes a difference to me. Like I said, I'm kind of far away from the mirror. So it's kind of, it's kind of difficult to, uh, Gauge quite what I'm doing, but seems to be getting a job done. Okay, I think I'm happy with that for the most part. Mm. Let's look in the camera, see how the lab looks. It looks good to me. What I'm going to do here is to sprinkle a little bit of water on here and paint it in. Cool, that'll do it. Can you lather up the nose? I only shave up there on Tuesdays. Carve, titanium, Christopher Bradley. Let's go with the grain here. It's so smooth. So I have a very long time subscriber. His name is Vic, he is in, I believe he's living in Manchester and he's originally Italian. He sent us an email and he said he is unsure why Carve is um, making all of these different materials, but also um, not addressing the issues the razor has. He said he believes that the new top kind, not new top cap design looks a little bit gimmicky, which is fine, you know, everyone's entitled to their opinion and all that. And uh, if it were him, he would just address the issues the race has. The issues he's identified, by the way, are the same issues we identified. So I actually don't disagree with him when it comes to the issues of the razor. My main thing, is what we're doing by releasing these different materials isn't a roadmap we bought out for ourselves so much. It's listening to customer feedback. The aluminum was built from some people wanting the aluminum razor. The titanium was built from years and years of hounding of Chris, asking for that razor. So it's not so much something we can say, okay, in the next few months, we're gonna release a, an aluminum razor because we think our line is missing it. Well, it kinda is because it's not there and we could have one. It's more to do with what we've been asked to do by a lot of customers as opposed to us just deciding we wanna do it, you know? 
So I fully respect your opinion, Vic. You're a good guy and you've supported my channel for a while. However, most of it is by vast customer request. Don't get me wrong, we're not, we're not making everything customers ask us to make because then we'd have a slant, we'd have an injector razor, and uh, it's not always doable. I don't think an injector razor would particularly sell too well. Not to our target audience anyway. Um, I mean, there's some fantastic injectors out there, especially New Age. I mean, look at Supply, they have an injector razor and I think it's outstanding. So, I guess if they can do it, so can we. But at the same time, um, you know, they do them, we do us. So that, that's, that's my, that's, that's really my response to you, Vic. I'm gonna put it in an email. Cause I think we owe you that, but. So let's talk about the issues of the Christopher Bradley design. For me, and this is something I noticed even before I started working for them, you know. The issues, I don't think the base plate collects lather well enough. Um, you can see it on my face in between passes. I don't think it picks it up well enough. We've um, established what the issue is there and it's pretty much, there's a thing that makes the bottom of the Christopher Bradley cry quite intricate. And if you see, you probably can't see it here, but these, the actual edges are not thick at all. They're actually quite thin. It makes the design quite intricate and frankly quite difficult to copy. Who's machining that? takes a lot of precision but what it does is it means the leather channels aren't working as efficiently as they possibly could um, there's that there's the blade tabs and a lot of people have said that design looks like a makeshift design honestly I'm not going to lie to you it kind of is well, something that's really important to remember about this top cap design we're not dealing with something from scratch here we're dealing with two years of development that's already existed. I can guarantee to you, so I, I, I can speak to you real here. I, I don't need to sugarcoat anything because I don't think you guys expect that from me. I can guarantee you to you, if we came up with a new top cap design and that new top cap design required to buy you a new base plate, all of the people that asked for that top cap design would come out pretty pissed off because they don't want to spend extra money on a base plate. So the reason we did it that way is to accommodate those people so they can still use their old plates. And use our new top cap. Now, if you want this new good looking design, but you don't like the look of the top cap, absolutely fair enough. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna say you're wrong because everyone again is entitled to their opinion. Go cross grain. What I will say is wait for the V2, because the V2 will address those issues. It probably have slightly different head geometry. This thing is so easy to shave with. I've actually been doing third passes with this razor, which for me is pretty much unheard of. I've been asked a few questions about this. Um, people want to know what the price is.
I'm not lying to you and saying we're not sure. This is the final prototype. We've made a few types of handles, etc., and this is what I'm going to go with for this. So, with that in mind, we know what the final product is going to be, and it is going to be this. But, we're not sure to make this feasible what sort of cost it has to be because there's a little bit more manual work involved for the nature of it being titanium. Which is okay, you know, it's not really a problem to us, but um, what that does mean is it will require an extra bit of cost. The thing I love about this razor is you can use that same light touch as the aluminum. And uh, there's a little bit more traction on your skin because of this slight increased weight. So for anyone that knows my videos, you know I don't ever really do it against the grain pass, but I, this razor it makes it really easy for me. Um, I found the aluminum has the tintiest bit of blade chatter, and because of that, it's not as comfortable for me. So about that guy, just got a phone call. So yeah, I, I, I find this razor overall a bit more comfortable. I missed a bit. Don't get me wrong, they're all excellent razors, in my opinion. Whatever Christopher Bradley you choose. You've picked a good razor there. However, those issues you identified, Vic, I absolutely don't agree with you. I mean, I absolutely don't disagree with you. Quite the opposite. <laughs> um, those are issues we've identified ourselves, and those are issues that will be addressed with the V2 of the Christopher Bradley. There's too much design work that's gone into this version of the razor already. The reason we're making the additional materials is because that's what customers have been wanting. It's not just us, you know, trying to make money out of people by any means. Don't get me wrong, money is the incentive for this. Otherwise, we wouldn't be operating as a business. But um, we're fully aware of what we need to do for the next version of the Christopher Bradley razor, or V2 carve, whatever you want to call it drying the brush a little bit. Completely aware, and uh, because of that, we are looking at this very objectively. So, you're sure to get a fantastic razor when that V2 does eventually come out. Not sure in terms of timeline yet, but I guess we'll find out, okay. Let's uh, clean off the face here with really cold water, <laughs> which I'm not used to anymore. Oh man, that's cold. Pretty cold. There's a towel warmer right beside me, so this is absolutely wonderful. <laughs> that cold, really cold water to the warm towel. Awesome. Great shave. Let's use, as per usual when I'm traveling, 
I've got the alcohol free splash or as usual I'm traveling I'm traveling with one of the Tingari splashes Let's use a bit of that it's like a really milky texture I don't know if you can see here very milky fantastic for the skin finally finish off with some Sego balm which I have in a small tester here this is the final product of the Sego balm so it's remarkably good Okay, wash the hands off a bit. I will introduce the gear or show you the gear again and then I'll leave you alone. I will be releasing some more videos from beautiful England and uh, I hope you catch those. I've been enjoying shaving with the soft water as you can see. Soap of choice was Talbot Shaving, Coles Pond. My favorite scent from Talbot, if you can pick it up, I would highly recommend it. It's lovely. My razor of choice is probably my new favorite razor. This is the Titanium Christopher Bradley. We're not sure on what we're calling the handle yet, so that's to be announced. My brush of choice was the 26 mil Turn and Shave Synthetic with the Turn and Shave coin there. And finally, my finish, or my post rather, was the Alcohol Free Splash 2, which is the one I hope she goes with for the final release, and the Singari Man Sego Bar. Fantastic video today, guys. Wonderful shave. Three pass shave, which is kind of rare for me. This razor is making it happen for me. I couldn't do that with the stainless, it was too heavy. I couldn't do that with the aluminum. Tiny bit of blade chatter was a little bit uncomfortable. Couldn't do that with the brass because it's the same problem as the stainless, it's too heavy with this. Don't have any problems at all. This is a wonderful razor. I can't wait till it comes out for carve. Any questions anyone has for the razor, just put them down below. I'll do my best to answer them. But yeah, my name is Jack, your host from the Virtual Grim Room. Whatever you are in the world, have a wonderful day and goodbye for now.